song is a song, Baby Do Not Quit, Home. They are close to home. I want that song to be sing again after the sermon. Okay? Make them to sing that song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can see the love of God in this place. God's love. Oh God. He cares. He loves his children. God has a big plans for each one of you today. God has great plans. I don't know, can I ask you to sing that song again? I really feel in my heart. Come to you before you knew what was love, and I saw it all. Still, I chose the cross, and you were the one that I was thinking of when I rose from the grave. Now, in all the shadows, my victory. Let's look to the word. Finding God's will. How can we find the will of God in our life? You know, um, so many times we already decide things in our in our heart. I'm going to do this. You know, I like this. I'm going to have this. Like we make decisions unknowingly in our heart. We, we don't even aware of it, but we already make decisions in our heart. Like, you know, I want this, I like this. So, but after that, again, we want to find God's way. And we think that, like, otherwise we feel bad if we don't ask for God's will. And we feel guilty sometimes if we don't ask God. And not only that, and we are afraid also. And if we don't find God's will, and that's why we go to Him, and for the will of God. But you know, but we cannot find His will that way. Because when we decide already things in our heart, we cannot, God is silent. We cannot know the will of God. Will of God will be known only before even you make any decisions in your heart. Before even you you put your reservations like I want this, I, I want to have this. Before even you, you do those things, you should go to God and find His will. You know, many times, like even for young children, young, young boys and girls, when you want to find your partners, you already set your mind on somebody or you want and you like the person. And you, you go to God and find God's will. But God is silent because he do not want to hurt you. You know, and we should not ask God that way, beloved. We, before even we have desires on someone before even we think about somebody. 
we should go to God with empty heart, not having any uh, limitations or reservations, not setting anything in our heart. We should find God's way. Hallelujah. Many times when God is silent, we think uh, that's an approval. Because God is not saying no, it means he's saying yes. <laughs> we, I used to think that way many long, you know, long time back. I, I did a lot of mistakes that way. I used to think when God is not saying anything, when God is silent, I used to take that as a yes. Because he did not say no, so it means yes. <laughs> but that is wrong. God is silent because you are not letting him make a decision for you. You know, that's why he's not making any decision for you. You need to let him. You have to give him permission. You have to make a room for him to work in your life. Then God will reveal his will to us. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. God said, Jeremiah, verse 29, <clears throat> verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Hallelujah. Amen. God's thoughts are greater than your thoughts. And God knows you very well. And because he created you, he made you, he knows what is good for you, what is safe for you, what brings delight to you, what gives pleasure to you, what exactly that you will enjoy about. He knows everything in and out about you. Sometimes we don't know about ourselves. Sometimes we don't even know what we want. But God knows everything about you, beloved. That's why he's saying that, I know, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. God has planned already something for you, a great. But his plans are great. Amen. More than you expected. More than you imagined. Every person is very much precious to God. Everybody, in everybody's life, the plan would be great. He has no partiality at all. He has no favorites at all. He loves everybody same. The way parents love their children, same way. In the same way, God loves his each and every person the same way, beloved. So the plan for you is great. The same great plans God has for us. So he's saying that, that I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. The thoughts of peace, it will give you peace. The plan of God will bring you peace. Thoughts that give peace and not of evil at all. It will never hurt you. The plan of God is not going to bring any hurt to you. You will never regret about it. You will never feel bad about it. He always brings peace to you. And then, a knot of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Hallelujah. You know, it, it means God's plan is going to give you a bright future. It's a bright future is waiting for you. Great things are stored for you. And, and a hope. So that you will have hope towards it. You will have expectation towards it. Be in expectation. Look forward to that. That kind of plans God has for you. Hallelujah. You know, um, that's why always desire the plan of God, not our plans, beloved. We, we, our, our knowledge is limited. Our wisdom is limited. Our wisdom, our knowledge is only confined to the, the things around us. What you see with your eyes, what you know about this world, only our knowledge is confined to that. 
but we cannot see beyond that. That's why have a desire for the plan of God, for His plan, not our plans. We cannot see the future. We don't know what is beyond. But God knows everything. That's why always have a desire for His plans, for His dreams, for His desires, not our plans. Hallelujah. You know, God's plan is always to make you fruitful, to make you blessing to many people, and to make you head, not the tail. And when the plan of God happens, that always brings destruction to the devil. Because in your plan, there's so many things God wanted you to have, that enemy has to give up those things. That's why enemy always come against the will of God to happen in our life. He always attacks the will of God. He doesn't want God's will to happen in our life. He doesn't want God's plan to happen in our life. That's why he takes us into the situations into the circumstances so that you will be pressurized to make decisions which is against the will of God. That's why watch out all the time. Don't be pressurized. Don't be pressurized. Don't look for temporary relief, temporary satisfaction. But always try to please God. Always do the will of God. You know why? Because in the will of God happens in your life. It is like a kingdom of God coming upon you. It is like a heaven coming into your life. When the, king, when the will of God happens. Because in the will of God, in the plan of God, you are a blessing to many people. God never put you to just to for yourself. God always put you here to become a blessing to many people. So many people, blessings are involved in your calling. So many people, deliverances, healings are involved in your calling. You are not just answerable for your life. You are answerable for many people's lives, for many souls. That's why always have a desire for the plan of God to happen in your life. We cannot just live for ourselves, beloved. We have to think about other people too. Hallelujah. You know, that's why how much enemy attacked Joseph. Let's, let's look into Joseph's life. God promised Abraham, through your offspring, all the nations of this earth are going to be blessed. That promise has been given to Abraham. Enemy heard it. Satan heard that. Satan knew that. Abraham's family, a savior is going to born. And he's going to save the whole world. From that time onwards, enemy's eyes are upon Abraham's family. Remember that. When Abraham's son, Isaac, born, enemy had eyes upon him. When Isaac had got two sons, enemy had eyes upon those two sons. When Jacob got 12 sons, enemy had eyes upon those 12 sons. You know why? You never know a savior is going to born from anybody here. That's why enemy was after Jews. Did you see that? Always, the, if you see the history, did you see the history? Why concentration camps and all that happened to Jews? Why? There's so much persecution Jews gone through because enemy wanted to wipe them away from the face of the earth. 
those Jews because enemy knew Savior is going to born from them. So when Jacob got 12 sons and famine is God already knew what is going to happen in the future. And God saw the famine is going to hit. In those days, famine was so great that people would just die, die out of, because no water and no food. It's not like these days. It was so severe. We never seen that famine in our lifetime. But you know what? Those days, famine is so great. People just die. So God knows what is going to happen in the future. The famine is going to hit. And this this family, God is protecting them like anything, beloved. Because the plan of God is going to happen over this earth through that family. God is so watchful and protecting this family. So God saw in the days to come, the famine is going to come. So God is preparing a plan to escape to rescue them from that, that, that famine, from the death. So God was looking for who is available to him. God wants to use that person among those 12 sons. God is looking for a man in those 12 sons who can love God, who pay attention to God, who can have the ears to hear God. God was looking for a man. In those 12, God found Joseph. Thank God, he found Joseph. So even he was a very young boy, teenage, God gave him a dream. In the dream, God showed him what is going to happen. That I will make you a leader as a Somebody who is sit on the throne. Through you, your whole family will be rescued. But God showed that figuratively that his sheep stood up. All other sheep came, bowed down. It means everybody will come for his shelter, for his he becomes a deliverer for the whole family. He becomes a deliverer for the whole family. God showed that, you know, but the brothers could not, that enemy worked through brothers to kill Joseph. Did you see that? Enemy used their brothers to kill Joseph because he's going to become a savior to them. He's going to become a deliverer to them. What is the plan of enemy? He wants to stop the Savior to born. He doesn't want the Savior to born. That's the plan of the enemy. Who available to him to bring his plan? <coughs> Joseph's brothers were available to him. So enemy used their jealousy to kill, to destroy the plan of God, beloved. Always, always think about it. When God has a plan in your life, enemy wants to destroy the plan of God in your life. He uses people, he uses situations to come against the plan of God upon your life. And then, and Joseph, here, I want you to come to this. This is very important now. From here after. Just. It is not enough to know that. You are called. It is not enough to know that. You have a big calling beloved. It is not enough to know. That. You are going to become somebody. But it is very important. Every step you take. Every decision you make in your life that will take you to your destiny. 
You know, today, many people were called, but very few people saw the fulfillment of call upon their lives. Many people callings were buried in the, in the soil, buried in the ground. Why? Because of wrong decisions, because of wrong choices they made in their life. They are not able to see the fullness of God's plan and destiny in their life. That's why if you really wanted the will of God in your life, you need to be very careful the path you choose in your life, beloved, the choices you make, the decisions you make are very, very important in your life. Don't take this life so lightly. Take it very seriously. Guard this life with your life. Guard it with all your might. Guard your mind, your desires, your flesh. With all your might, with all your strength, guard it. You know, Joseph, when, when he was thrown in the pit, he, when, if he made a choice to listen to his own heart, his own mind, his own flesh, he would not have made it. He would not have survived in the pit. You know that is a wild animals will come in the night time. They might have killed him in the pit. But he did not choose to follow, listen to his flesh. He chose to, rather he chosen to hear God, to focus on his calling in the pit. If, I will tell you, if we are in that position, if we are in the pit, what would you have done? Tell me, what would I have done? If I was in the pit like Joseph. It's very easy to hear your flesh that time, right? When you are down, your flesh is so strong. Your flesh is so loud. <coughs> it brings pressure to you. It's very easy to go away from God. Very easy. Because one, you know, he might have struggled with, in the pit, he might have struggled with these things, I will tell you. The main struggle, what he would have gone through is that pain of own brothers throwing him in the pit, that was a pain, great pain, great pain. Emotionally painful. Is not physically, but emotionally. Very painful. His own people wanted to kill him. Own brothers wanted to kill him. It was painful. Very easy to become angry and bitter against his brothers. But if you chosen him not to be angry. He chosen not to be angry. He chosen to forgive them. He chooses not to be bitter. And the other thing, I, I know what would have really gone into his mind that time is fear. Fear. Fear of death. You know, and I know he overcame that fear. With what? With what? He already heard from God that God has a call upon his life. Hallelujah. And he would have remembered, reminded himself about the dream. Two times he got dream. Beloved, when you are in a problem, remind yourself what God spoken to you already. Hallelujah. About your destiny. Amen. I'm sure, I'm sure in that day that Pete. He would have reminded himself maybe hundred times, thousand times about that dream. Oh God, you showed me the dream. No, I'm not going to die now. No, I'm not going to die. 
Amen. I'm going to become a leader. Amen. I know I will become a savior to my brothers. Amen. I will become a savior to my family. I'm not going to die in this pit. He was holding on to that. He was hanging on to the promise of God. And then it's very easy to become angry with God also sometimes. Enemy will put the, that anger in our hearts towards God. See, why God allowed you to be in the pit? Okay, brothers wanted to throw you in the pit, but God should have stopped them to throw you. All kinds of logic and all kinds of reasoning, the thoughts will run into your head. But you know, he would have thought that, I don't understand all this, but one thing I'm sure, God loves me. I don't know why it's happening. I don't know. I can't tell why. But one thing I'm sure, God has a great plan for my life. God showed me the dream. He loves me. He will not let me die. Hallelujah. Beloved, even though you don't understand every detail, why it is happening, why, why, don't waste your time questioning God. You will go more deeper in the pit. If you really want to come up, be certain way. Behave certain way. Have a good attitude. Think certain way. That's what I'm telling you. Come to the place. You need to come to the place where you will find God's provision. Where you will find God's protection. You need to reach to your place. If you are negative and thinking about failure and depressed, you will not find God's provision. You will not find God's protection. You need to come out of that thinking. You need to come out of that attitude. Come to your place where you find His strength, where you find God, where you find His provision, where you find His protection. If, if Joseph remained in that pit mentality, negative thinking, fear, anger, bitterness, he would not have found a God's protection. Because he came out of that and he put himself in a place, faith, stand in faith. Stand in faith. God will never leave me in a pit. God will never let me die. God has a plan for me. That should be your faith. Stand. Come to your place. There you will find God. There you will find provision. There you will find his protection. That is why I will tell you today. Why that day the Midianites, they were passing by. God made them to pass by. God made his brother to think that way. Let me sell him to them. That thought, he's getting that thought that, that that time they were passing by Midianites, it's all God ordained it. God ordained it to protect Joseph, to pull Joseph from the pit. God ordained that. Those events. Why? Because Joseph came to your place. That, is, that place is very important for all of us. Every one of us, it's okay, pity party, self-pity and all that. Get over, beloved, get over. Don't stay in the pity party forever. Come up, come up, come up. God is calling you. Come, come out. Come out of that mentality. Come out of that attitude. Come on, stay in faith. Stand in faith. Don't go send God. Why things happen? Don't come to your place. Trust in him. Stand in faith. God never let you down. God will never leave you in pit. God has a great plan for you. Stand in faith. You will find protection. Amen. You will find God's provision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
and then that this that is what i'm t talking to you today doing the will of god is that the decision you make is very important that is called will of god joseph made the right decision is easy to go in depression easy to stay in the negativity negative attitude is easy but make a decision today make a decision today not to go down not to go down stand in faith that is what right decisions right choices doing the will of god hallelujah amen and even in that with with potiphar wife in the place he was in a place he was in a put in a place he was tempted there it was a temptation for him but he made a right decision there even i go to a prison and let me go but let me do the right thing here amen let me do the right thing what is the right thing he did i will not commit sin against my god i will not commit sin against my master i will not sleep with this lady i will not commit any immorality sexual immorality with this lady because uh, you know why he is so careful about obeying god he is so careful about his steps he is so careful about his decisions why because his calling is so precious to him that's why beloved today why people make even it is so painful but we still make right decisions why because if calling is too important for you if calling is too important for you that's what i'm saying you need to guard your calling with all the strength with all the might if that is important you will give up anything that is coming on the way hallelujah do you do you think that the calling is so important for joseph you know why we won't be here otherwise if savior is not born joseph calling is so important for the world that day joseph standing on the integrity that is important for for the whole world if joseph did not stand that day the whole family would have died in the famine savior would not have born jesus would not have born we would not be there today we are, we are oh today we are enjoying our life but somebody gone through pit somebody gone into the prison somebody made a right decisions somebody gave up immorality somebody gave up temptations today we are enjoying the fruit of their sacrifice today do you think that if you sacrifice something for god today somebody will thank you one day they would be rescued from hell and the fire they would be thankful to you because of your sacrifice because you give up your dreams i am saved tell me tell me our our satisfaction is only temporary only when we live on this earth our pleasures will go away when we die but if you give up your pleasures for souls even you go in the eternity you will see all your souls because of you they were saved they will be in heaven with you they will be in heaven with you you will rejoice that day wow how good i made the right decision how good i sacrificed my life today i'm i'm seeing all these souls coming with me to in heaven rejoicing with me 
Do you take your life so serious today? Every step, every decision, very important. Very important. It is like a think about like this. You want to reach somewhere, Toronto downtown, or maybe some place, but whatever. Toronto downtown is too easy. <laughs> Give me some address. And you reach somewhere very far. That is your goal, that is your destiny. Then you got to follow the road map. GPS. You have to follow the directions what GPS is telling you. Otherwise, you fit and, oh, no, I don't want to go that way. I want to go this way. You will never reach your destiny. You will never reach your destiny. Very important to do the will of God. Otherwise, you will never reach your calling, your destiny. Very important. You take God's direction. Follow Him. Whatever He is telling you, follow His will. Very important. Let me tell you about Abraham. Hallelujah. Then I lend. Abraham life. If you see that, oh my God, this is so much I'm blessed when I see Abraham life. You can learn so much from Abraham. When God spoke to Abraham, let's see the scripture please. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 3. Now the Lord has said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house. To a land that I will show you, I will make you a great nation, I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. Did you see that? In you all the families of the earth, all the families Think about it. All the families of the earth shall be blessed in you. And then he's saying that I will make you a great nation. I will bless you, make your name great. But this came with a great price. God showed him the way how he's going to use him, how many people are going to be blessed through him, all that he showed. But it came with a great price. And he told, this will happen only if you leave your father's house, if you leave your country and come out. Then it will happen. <laughs> That's where, you know, salvation is free. But calling is not free. Expensive. Costly. Very costly. Very costly. For Abraham, it, it looks like it's easy because you're not in, the, in his shoe. Because you're not in his place. For you, it doesn't look like it's a great price he paid. But if you are in that place, you think, how many attachments you have to break up? How many attachments? When you are in a place, your father's house, your relatives, everybody, your own people, you have to break up. You never know, we, we, we might not meet them again. We might not meet them again. He had to break up all that relationships. Maybe he might have been attached to many properties there. He might have earned many properties in that land, but he had to give up everything. Sometimes do you give up? Give up your house means do you give up? Do you give up your lands, your properties, your money, everything, your people? It's very hard. It's very hard. Very great price that is. He paid he did that. Why? Because
because he wanted to have what God wants to have. He wanted to he see what God is seeing. Beloved, that's what we need to get into the shoes of God. We need to see what God is saying, the big picture. Big picture you have to see. God is seeing that the way far beyond oh so many people on this earth are going to perish and going to last but I'm going to save them through him. He had seen what God is seeing there. He wanted to have what God wants to have. He saw that big picture. Then he thought, maybe he thought, it's okay, even if I leave my family, I might, I'll see them in heaven. <laughs> maybe he would have thought that. I, I, I can see them in heaven. But if I don't go with God now, I will not see the people of this earth in heaven anymore. They will be lost forever. It's okay if I give up my family, I can meet my family in heaven. But I can't be with the souls. Maybe he would have thought that way. He would have thought this way. Okay, even if I give up my properties, it's okay. In heaven, God will make me rich. When his kingdom comes, I will live in mansion, big city. I can have everything. It's okay. This, this, anyway, it's temporary. The, the earthly things are temporary. Earth will fade away. All things will go away. It's temporary. But I can become rich for eternity. I can become rich. Maybe he would have thought all these things. Those things would have ran into his mind that time. And then he made up his mind. Okay, Lord, I'm coming. I will give up everything. Hallelujah. Can you think that way? Yes? Yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus. You know what? After that, it, it did not stop with that. His sacrifice did not stop with that. More sacrifice he had to make. More sacrifices. Do you think that to get the whole earth, all families of the earth, do you think that is easy? He had to pay more price. Remember? But he did not know that he's supposed to pay more. Maybe he thought, oh, enough. I paid enough, he thought. He was walking with God, walking with God, walking with God. Slowly, 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 he's coming to understand. Then, finally, God asked something else. <laughs> I did not go through all, in between so many things, he gave up Sodom and Gomorrah, he gave up, he's a rich lad, he gave up for Loth. All those things, I, I'm not going through every detail. But the bigger test he, he faced is this one. Um, when God asked him to give his son, Isaac. That was the biggest test. That was the last test for him. So when God asked uh, um, Abraham to give up his son, Isaac, and I want you to know that, how strong he became in his faith by that time. Because enough time he spent time with God, he got that his faith became stronger. If you really spend time with God, if you walk with God, your faith will become more and more stronger in him. In his word, your, your faith in his word, your faith in his blessings, your, your faith in his character, in God's character, in God's nature, your faith will become more and more. Abraham became like that. And you know, God asked Abraham to give up his son. He, what he was thinking in his mind, you know, he was never thinking that, oh, I'm losing my son. He never thought that way, beloved. That's what I want you to see here. That was never came into his mind. His mind, he think like this, you know, um, let's say Genesis chapter 22 Verse um, 5. Genesis chapter 22, verse 5. And Abraham said to his young men, he came, he went with young um, men, with 
his maybe his servant you know he went with them and he was telling uh, he was telling abraham son isaac and with servants he went so he was telling them stay here with the donkey the lad and i will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you did you see that you know out of the heart mouth speaks out of the heart mouth what is in your heart your mouth unknowingly speaks what was in his heart he never thought he is losing his son that day what he was saying to them we will come back to you you stay here we will just we are going there just to worship god but we will come back to you he it means we means who he and his son and then um, genesis chapter 22 verse 7 and 8 then isaac is asking now isaac got a doubt now and but isaac spoke to abraham and his father and said my father and he said here i am my son then he said look the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for a burnt offering and abraham said my son god will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering so the two of them went together to see that that's why he was very bold and confident he was not afraid he was not fearful because he was so confident he is not going to lose his son and he was telling his son my son god will take care of the lamb it means he already knew god's heart very well that's what happens when what you will never be afraid when you know god well he knew god by that time he spent time with god he knew the heart of god because you know what god will never break his promises when god said to abraham i will bless all the families of the earth through your offspring isaac many times he made that point very clear abraham thought oh through ishmael god said no 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 the son from your wife isaac god made very clear only through isaac all the nations will be blessed then how can god take isaac now how can god take isaac savior has to born from isaac how can god never take isaac because he never break promises once he promised he will fulfill Abraham knew God very well. God is faithful, and he never. It means he would have he would have thought that way. I think my God is testing me, whether I I give my son or not. Okay, I'm going to pass the test. I will give my son, and maybe he was thinking that because God is so powerful, He can raise the dead up. Even if my son is killed, He will raise him up. he will raise him up because all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed through my son isaac isaac is important that's what i am not saying my own words beloved this what i said is in hebrews it written it is in hebrews if you want to go home and check it hebrews 11 says that abraham reasoned it this way god can raise up the dead hallelujah he knew how powerful our god is he has power and authority to raise the dead up and he knew god is faithful he never break his promise amen so that's why he went like that and he said and he passed the test hallelujah, hallelujah. as he thought as he believed god never let abraham to put a sword on isaac he said no abraham stop and the lamb came as he exactly what he thought he said that word to him them what to isaac god will provide lamb exactly god provide a lamb hallelujah and then when he was coming then when when he passed the test did you see god confirmed that promise to him again Genesis chapter 12 uh, sorry Genesis chapter 
verse 17, 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, 18. Blessing. I will bless you. After he passed the test, God is so amazed and so happy and he's so proud of, of his son. And he was saying, blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendant shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, he doesn't have to live to see the fulfillment of promise. He already got all the souls that day. He already got it. You know what? He already paid the price. He already paid the price. God already confirmed him. You passed the test. I've given you souls as the stars. That's why, beloved, even he died today. He knew he already got souls. He, he already got souls because he already paid the price for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Today I'm telling you, the call what God has given to you, you don't have to go and preach the whole world to see your calling fulfilled. Even if you pay the price, even somebody can go and preach the gospel, have big, big crusades, many millions of people come to the Lord. But why? Because you pay the price. You pay the price. You might not be a crusade speaker. You might not be a great speaker. You might not have all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You might not have all the chances, opportunities to minister to people. But they are yours only. Why? Because the, the vision is yours. The price you paid for the vision. Hallelujah. The vision, the promise God gave to you. And for the promise you paid the price. Today, you can win whole the world. Whole world. By sitting in your own room and small closet, by interceding and crying, shedding tears for the lost souls, you can win the world. Hallelujah. Pay the price. Pay the price for your call. Pay the price. You know, people might not see you paying the price. People will see only those who are on the stage. People would see only they are powerful, they think. But their power, this, the secret of them winning is somebody behind the screen paying the price. Somebody behind the stage paying the price. Beloved. Behind the stage. So many people paying price behind the stage. Let me tell you in this church, I know so many people paying price in this church. Maybe you are not, sometimes I fail to appreciate you. Sometimes I even forget. But I know there are so many people in this church paying price. Secretly paying price. They're giving up so many things to serve God. They're giving their time, praying for souls, giving up their pride, humbling themselves, doing many things. I know you love us so much. That is also your paying price. Sometimes you're going out of the way to love us, beloved. You know, Samantha's parents were saying to me, you know, your church people love you so much. I'm really thankful for that. I'm very grateful. We are very much grateful to all of you. We have seen the past week, week how much you guys love us. You went to that hall and you decorated the hall. You know, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. But you become my own family. And you took this as your own responsibility. And you took my son as your son. My children as your children. And you really prayed for us. So much price you are paying. Even though I don't praise you outwardly. 
but God will reward you. You're paying price. But today, we, if we are winning souls, don't think that it is because of us we are winning souls. It's because of your sacrifices, because of you standing with us, because of you praying for us. We are winning souls. Hallelujah. Let's start. Shut up, 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 up